Hello and welcome to Pediatric Lectures. I hope we can shall discuss something in which gives extreme joy to all parents and that is to see the child grow. And this growth is a unique privilege for all of us pediatricians. In this tutorial we will briefly overview principles of growth and introduce to our undergraduate friends the uninitiated ones to its basic overview. Now what is growth? It's basically a dynamic process in which there is an absolute increase in size and this increase is mediated through increase in cell number or cell size or both of those mechanisms. For the sake of simplicity we can look at growth as two phases one of fetal growth and one of postnatal growth and in this it's important to remember a few terminologies so for prenatal growth over means a product of conception between 0 to 14 days of gestation. From 14 days to 9 weeks of gestation it is referred to as embryo and beyond 9 weeks of gestation to birth it's called fetus. Similarly in postnatal growth neonate is between 0 to 28 days of life while it's called infant in the first year of life. Toddlers and preschoolers and school age are important terminologies to remember. Adolescence is defined by WHO as an age group between 10 to 19 years of age and it is gaining remarkable importance in pediatric practice. Now let's discuss a few laws of growth. Now growth is continuous and in a specific order that order being cephalocaudal and distoproximal meaning thereby that the head develops grows first followed by neck and the acral parts again grow first before the proximal part. This sequence means that the body proportion changes as the child grows. So the upper segment to lower segment ratio is about 1.7 is to 1 at birth which becomes 1 is to 1 at around 7 to 9 years of age. Also the growth velocity is different in different phases of life. So in the first year of life the child grows by about 25 centimeters and this slows down in the middle childhood years to about 4 to 6 centimeters per year and then comes the pubertal growth spurt at different times for males and for females. During the pubertal growth spurt the average increment is about 12 centimeters per year. Also different tissue grow at different times and at different rates. So the lymphoid growth is maximum in first 6 years of life and then it sort of atrophies. The neural growth is maximum in first two years of life and then it plateaus and similarly the genital growth is a maximum with the pubertal spurt. Now all those laws apply on all individuals and yet the pattern of growth is unique in different individuals and that is mainly because of the factors affecting growth. Again for the sake of simplicity we will look into factors affecting fetal growth and that affecting the postnatal growth. Now fetal growth is maximum and it means that a zygote which is about 130 micrograms uh, sorry 130 microns in length and about 10 micrograms in weight goes on to become a term baby with about 50 centimeters of length on an average and a weight of 3 kg and this remarkable growth is mediated to fact important being genetic potential of the child that he inherits from his parents. Fetal hormones such as thyroxine and insulin are very important determinants. Glucocorticoids are also important in the later half of gestation. In this regard it's important to remember that growth hormone is not known to influence fetal growth. Growth factors such as insulin like growth factors IGF-1 and 2, epidermal growth factors etc also affect multiple aspects of tissue growth in autocrine and paracrine mechanisms. Maternal factors such as age, parity, health status in terms of anemia and chronic diseases along with obstetric complications also affect fetal growth remarkably. And lastly but equally important is the structural and functional integrity of placenta which is one of the more important determinants of fetal growth. Now fetal growth not just has long term ramifications in terms of growth potential in the postnatal period but also in terms of future metabolic health. So how does that occur? So basically all these factors which influence fetal growth produce 
what is known as a placenta fetal response and this is nothing but an adaptation to existing uterine environment in terms of subtle changes in metabolism endocrine and autonomic functions this adaptation is also called fetal programming which persists at birth and beyond and thereby permanently changes the physiology and metabolism and continue to express even in absence of stimuli which initiated them thus there is effect on future metabolic health another interesting and very actively researched aspect to this debate is that of epigenetics which is the study of carefully orchestrated chemical reactions such as dna methylation and histone modification at strategic times like fetal growth which activate or deactivate parts of genome thereby affecting phenotypic expressions and ultimately the future metabolic health so in essence fetal growth is a very critical period which affects not just postnatal growth potential but also affects the metabolic health of the individual in later life now coming on to the postnatal growth and again the genetic potential is one of the key determinants but also important are extrinsic factors such as socio economic factors and nutrition nutrition in a country like ours with its massive burden of undernutrition is a key determinant of postnatal growth socio economic factors like income access to healthcare emotional support and parental education which affects health promoting activities and behavior also affect child's growth and finally adverse events like chronic illnesses recurrent infection also have a bearing on child's health status directly and indirectly and finally the hormonal milieu that the child has is one of the most important determinants of postnatal growth and important ones being growth hormone thyroxins and the sex steroids now talking of chief determinants in postnatal growth the growing years of child can be divided into three compartments the first two years of life and then the period of childhood from 2 to 12 years of age and finally the pubertal period in the first two years of life it's nutrition which is the primary determinant in the childhood period growth hormone becomes the most important determinant of the growth and in pubertal period growth hormone in sync with sex steroid decide the pubertal spurt and the final adult height achieved this is known as the icp model and it was first uh, introduced by kalberg et al now let's move on and discuss the assessment of growth now the first prerequisite for assessment of growth is current anthropometric measurements proper measurement of height using a stadiometer ensuring that the child stands uh, in a manner shown and the head is in the frankfurt plane which is basically the upper margin of the external auditory meatus and the lower margin of the orbit are in the same plane parallel to the ground also important is to understand and familiarize yourself with the use of infantometers and use of tapes to take a correct occipital frontal head circumference this needs to be practiced a lot but again i'll emphasize that correct measurements are key to assessing growth once you have an accurate measurement it's pertinent to plot them on growth charts now what are growth charts they are basically excellent tool to follow a child's growth at over a period of time these growth charts are constructed by utilizing normative data from large cohorts of children over time thus anthropometric measurements such as height weight and head circumference of an individual can be compared to expected parameters of children of same age and sex thereby assessing the adequacy of growth and let's look at the timeline of these growth chart and the first growth charts were 
uh, introduced by Stuart and Meredith in around the early 70s and it was based on a small sample size of Caucasians uh, from the Boston and Iowa City. This was improved upon by NCHS uh, which had cross-sectional data from NHES and other bodies and in 1978 WHO recommended international use of these NCHS chart. CDC again you know uh, fortified them with five again national cross-sectional surveys and included more breastfed infants yet till these 2000s we had samples which were representative of Caucasian populations so in 1997 WHO started the multi-center growth reference study and it went from 1997 to 2003. Finally in 2006 we had data from Brazil, Ghana, India, Norway, Oman and USA. Thus a multi-ethnic representation and the idea was to have an international standard. Currently these are the charts which are mostly recommended. Indian Academy of Pediatrics has also brought Indian standards and they are also in vogue. They came in the year 2014. Now for the uninitiated a growth chart basically has an x-axis where the age is plotted and a y-axis on which the anthropometric measurement is plotted. Now these charts can be uh, for boys or for girls. So pink and pink for girls and blue for boys. Now how do you plot now you will find that the growth charts are in terms of percentiles or in terms of Z scores. So what are percentiles and what are Z scores? Since you will be using a lot of growth charts, it's very important to familiarize yourself with these two terminologies. So basically as far as percentile goes, it divides the data into 100 equal parts and then ranks the individuals with values specifying the fraction of population that is less than the specified value. So if we take an example of third percentile, it basically means that about 3 out of 100 would have values less than this particular given value. Similarly, 85th percentile means that 85% of the population, you know, 85 out of 100 would have values less than this particular value. Another way to understand and compare individuals is Z score. Now Z score is a little bit more tricky but again it basically ranks an individual relative to the mean in terms of standard deviation. So let's look at this. This is the mean and this is one standard deviation. So to assess of for any given value what is the Z score the formula that we would use is the observed value minus mean divided by standard deviation. So you will get the assessment in terms of how away it is from mean in terms of standard deviations. Again few uh, growth curves which are not that frequently used but are important if you are assessing short stature are the growth velocity curves. right? And the important line to remember is the 25th percentile. So if a child is having a growth velocity less than the 25th percentile, then it requires a formal assessment. Now we talked about fetal growth in the early part of this tutorial. What about preterms? What about those born before 37 completed weeks of gestation? And for them, there are multiple charts, but Fenton's growth chart is one of the more representative ones because it's comparable to the WHO standards once we start plotting them on the postnatal growth curve. So Fenton's chart starts from about 22 weeks of gestation and you can plot them till 50 weeks of gestation. Beyond this, you need to go to the WHO growth chart. So is it easy to uh, plot it on a WHO growth chart? The answer is not that much because you need to take into account the corrected gestational age. So let's give it to you through an example. So we have a five month old male baby who weighs about five kgs. He was born at 32 weeks of gestation, was normal with general delivery and had a birth weight of 1.1 kg. Right. So first understand what by how many weeks was he premature 
and the formula is 40 weeks minus the gestational age so which is 32 in this case so he was premature by 8 weeks or about 2 months so what is his corrected age the formula for corrected age is chronological age minus weeks of prematurity so in this case 5 months minus 8 weeks or about 2 months so the corrected age in this example is 3 months now once you start plotting if you plot only based on his chronological age what you'll find is that at 5 kgs is less than minus 3 z score now that's not very representative you need to have a corrected age and once you correct the age to about 3 months since he was 8 weeks premature you'll find that the child is at minus 2 z score and this is the ideal way to give it in representation so a dot and a arrow which shows the correction that you have done for all uh, preterms age should be corrected till 2 years of age when you are plotting it on postnatal growth curves and that is something very important to remember before we sign up uh, again for my undergraduate friends it's important to remember these growth increments in first year of life uh, a quick tip that I'll give is that if you remember the weight gain the height gain per month is very easy so in first three years of life the child grows by 30 grams per day and 3 centimeters per month so 20 to 15 1.5 right but you do have to remember this finally the Weiches formula which are basically an approximation of the average weight or height the child might have these are very important formulas to remember I will again stress they do not replace the growth charts but it gives you as a pediatrician or somebody who is involved with a child's health a quick assessment of what is the average that the child should have attained so do remember it happy reading happy learning thank you so much